Reality Reveal. Being Erica. All new this Wednesday at 11, only on SoapNet. See, I'm laying awake last night, Frank, and I'm thinking, it's not a question of you getting more support from the people who work for you in the district. I mean, you, you're not getting half-hearted support. The people that are for you are for you. I mean, I think they proved that in the, in the campaign for city council, right? Yeah. Okay. The way I see it, it's a question of getting the non-believers into the fold. You got any ideas? Sure, I do. Now, listen. As I remember it, there were about a, a dozen people who campaigned effectively against you, you know, in the primary. There was uh, two or three from Yarmolinsky's club and uh, that old lady on 189th Street. What was her name? How could you forget Dynamite Dora Duval? That loudmouth. And uh, there was uh, Farley, there was Old Man Lewis, and... Uh, Abbott and Marco Sanchez? Yeah, right. Now, Frank, here's what I think you ought to do. You ought to call each and every one of those people up on the telephone, starting tonight with Yarmolinsky and, and invite him to breakfast, one at a time. And then you tell him, uh, look, see, I... Uh, I admire uh, the way you campaign. Uh, I, I respect your clout in the neighborhood, and I really appreciate uh, all the advice you can give me. And, and then you tell them uh, what you're about with this congressional campaign, you see? And, and, and you tell them you understand that they represent the best minds in the neighborhood and all, and uh, you would appreciate their input uh, before you go on record about, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you follow? Yeah, I think it's a terrific idea. <laughs> And, of course, you invite him to breakfast right over here at Ryan's so your mother and I can get a crack at him. I mean, the ones we happen to know. There's only one thing I don't understand. What's that? Why you didn't go into politics yourself 30 years ago. <laughs> well, thanks for the compliment, but as a matter of fact, uh, I've improved with age. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, I've gotten milder, mellower. Uh -huh. I'm not as likely these days to, uh, to settle a, a dispute with the right hook. Ah, don't forget to tell Finelli. No, I, I don't take that very kindly, Frank. You know, I've been I a model of good behavior the last I'm sorry, couple of weeks. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just... Just... <laughs> your policy. Do you have time for my news? Do we? Yeah. Where else in the city of New York do we have more time for you and your news? <laughs> hey, where's Finelli? He's out with the fellas. Well, what's your news? Wait until you hear. All right, uh, here's, um... Here's Johnny Ryan, and uh, here's his kids. Well, wait a minute, where's Mrs. Ryan? Uh, oh, well, well, she's there, too. Oh, uh, come on, uh, Maeve, darling, here. <laughs> but, but she's something else entirely. She's different. Now, what we're talking about is Johnny Ryan. Yes, seems to me we've been talking about Johnny Ryan all evening. I thought you wanted some background on, on Frank Ryan. I mean, this is the real stuff. This is what makes Frankie run, okay? Now, now, two girls I don't know much about. One's, uh, one's married, the other is, uh, is off in Seattle. The three that are still here, uh, Frank and Mary and Pat, the old man's never let go of. I mean, he's doing it all over again. Three times simultaneously, he's leading three more lives. The, the input never stops. Advice, praise, defining the situation, <laughs> laying down the... What's well, so funny? Oh, Mr. Finelli, you have just described my mother. He, you're not, uh, you're not taking me seriously. Of course I am. You know, it's really very interesting. You describe the Ryans and what you interpret as a structured, authoritarian, mutually dependent kind of experience is what someone else would call a, a big, closely knit, old-fashioned family. But I suppose it's all, it all depends on where you're coming from. Hmm. You know what really interests me about the Ryans? What? Your connection to them. Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a long story. So tell. But the condensed version's easier. Uh, old acquaintance, uh, frequent observer, uh, sometime participant in Ryan affairs, and uh, that leaves out the best part. Oh? Why? I may want to write about it someday. Hey, um, let's talk about you, hmm? Okay. Let's talk about me.
Want more of your favorite soaps? That's great. Log on to abc.com slash daytime. Watch current full episodes of All My Children, General Hospital, and One Life to Live. Online critics love it. Plus, get exclusive sneak peeks of what's coming up next. Sounds like a thumbs up to me. Connect with other fans to discuss what's on your mind. I always want to hear what you have to say. And check out the 101 galleries to get an intimate look at the history of your favorite characters. That's the best news I've heard all day. Find it all now at abc.com slash daytime. Slim Quick is the number one selling weight loss brand for women. I lost 54 pounds with Slim Quick. I lost 26 pounds with Slim Quick. I lost 34 pounds with Slim Quick. Slim Quick contains a clinically researched key ingredient. Start losing up to 25 pounds today with Slim Quick. We get cats. They're smart. They can outsmart their humans and their canines. That's why they deserve the smartest choice in litter. So we make fresh step scoopable litter with carbon, which is more effective at absorbing odors than baking soda. Fresh step. Your cat deserves the best. And for the strongest odors, look for fresh step extreme odor control litter. There's a way to let go of some of the annoying symptoms menopause brings. It's one a day menopause formula. The only complete multivitamin with soy isoflavones to help address hot flashes and mild mood changes. One a day menopause formula. If you have diabetes and love food, pay attention to this free offer. Hi, I'm Nicole Johnson. I've had diabetes for years and I love food. To me, there's nothing tastier than rich chocolate cake, except maybe crispy oven fried chicken or cheesy potato skins. Mmm. Get these recipes and many more free in these amazing diabetes cookbooks. If you have diabetes and are on Medicare, you qualify for these three free cookbooks. Call 1-800-841-2700. Enjoy dozens of yummy recipes for desserts, main dishes, snacks, and more. Plus, get this free guide to planning delicious diabetes-friendly meals. So call now and get cooking. For your three free cookbooks and free meal planning guide, call 1-800-841-2700. That's 1-800-841-2700. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish we could have stayed in the park. Well, it was getting kind of dark. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be late for dinner with my mother. Oh, I'm sorry you can't stay, but I know that she needs you. Well, you gotta talk to somebody after you testify at that damn trial. I was lucky to have you. I just listened. No, it really made me feel better, you and your bubbles. Hey, hmm? you got a couple minutes? Come in and see my temporary headquarters. Daddy fixed it up really nice. Okay. <laughs> it's beautiful. Why look for another place? Well, because I don't want to live at home. That's the door to the rest of the house. Ah. Oh, not that it's not private. I mean, I have my own entrance, and the walls are practically soundproof. I can invite people over and do what I like. But still... You don't want to live at home. Say, listen, I, uh, I hope I'm going to be one of those people you'll invite over. You're invited. When's your day off? Tomorrow, as a matter of fact. The weatherman said tomorrow's gonna be sunny and warm. Bathing suit weather. Well, then we can't stay indoors. Let's go to the houseboat. <gasps> Great. Oh, you got work. Oh, listen, Channel R can do one day without me. Sam won't mind. The only thing is, you know, I, I really hate to take you away from your mother. She'll still be in town, right? Well, no, we'll meet later in the afternoon, which will suit her just fine because she'll probably be shopping all day. So, I'll see you tomorrow, huh? Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> hey, you better be on your way. If you're too late, your mother's gonna be mad at me, and I don't want that. My mother hardly ever loses her temper. <laughs> <laughs> Not at you, maybe. But uh, I've seen a picture of her in that magazine article, and she looked a tiny bit scary to me. My mother is about as scary as a lamb. Listen, let me take you to meet her tomorrow. I'm going to leave the houseboat. I'd really like that. 
Oh, Bucky, I wouldn't be wearing the right kind of clothes. Well, bring some. You can change before we go to the hotel. Come on. I insist. Well, okay. I mean, if she's your mother, she must be a very lovely person, and I will try not to be afraid of her. Silly girl. Listen, uh, thanks a lot this afternoon. I feel about 1,000 trillion million billion times better than when I got off that witness stand. Well, then I did what I set out to do. Oh, it's a good deed, huh? No. I loved being with you. <laughs> Your mother. Oh. Come on. I want to stay. I want to stay and talk. <laughs> like for about 10 hours. <laughs> well, we'll talk tomorrow on the house phone. Hmm? Oh. Come on. Okay. Um, 9.30 too early? Oh, no, any time is fine. I'll be up with the birds. Nine. What are you doing, peeking through the keyhole? <sighs> I gotta talk to you, honey. Not now, Daddy. I've got some stuff to do. No, no, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll help you. So there I was, an Ivy League English major home for my first year in Europe. Miss Martha McKee, child of privilege. Mm -hmm. And I'm not one bit apologetic about it. I <laughs> loved it. And I had this unfinished novel in my suitcase. Is it still unfinished? Uh, yes, it seemed like the merciful thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I looked around and I wondered, okay, what now? And I had the great good fortune to fall mildly in love with the race car driver, whose name you would instantly recognize, and therefore I will not mention it because he is married. I see. Well, you don't see it all, because as of yet, you don't know that I am wild. Wild about automobiles. I drive them, I read about them, I repair them, and I dream about them. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> no. So I'm off to Indianapolis with this driver in a state of pure ecstasy. Of course, when his wife arrives, I have to fall back on my own resources. And so I write, initially for my own amusement, 10,000 words on the race. History, colors, interviews, an account of that year's event. And uh, you brought it home and sold it to Ed McCullough on the banner. Yeah. I remember it. You do? That was a terrific piece. <laughs> I remember when I was reading it. I remember it was written by a female, too, only, only uh, the name. The name didn't take. McKee. M. C. K. E. Got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I wrote three more pieces for Ed, and he didn't print any of them, and I was ready to jump into the river. But he did buy the fourth, and uh, I'm still there, learning. Yeah, sometime I'll show you some of the early stories I wrote for the banner. I keep them to read in case I need a little humility. Oh, which is surely not often. Hardly ever. <laughs> oh, seriously, I'd love to see them. Tonight, maybe. And I'm really sorry, I, uh, I can't. In fact, I gotta think about getting going. I, uh, I got half a column, still in the typewriter. Due tomorrow? Yeah. Take a rain check? You bet. Miss Mills called and asked me to please come up to the nursing home right away because Hector had tried to commit suicide. Oh, Mary, no. Is he all right? Yes, or he will be. Miss Mills found him in time and they got him to the hospital and had his stomach pumped. He left a note behind, saying that it was in protest to the conditions at Gilcrest Manor. Oh, who's in control of that place anyway? Wait a minute, and I'll tell you, we got the whole story to begin with. Miss Mills was really shaken by it all, and she finally gave me a statement. Sure, that'll simplify everything, Mary. 
Is the special prosecutor's investigator going to be up there tomorrow? You got my message. Honey, I could save him a lot of time if you just tuned into Channel R News tomorrow night. We covered the whole thing. I was really worried about it. Listen, I looked into it, and Bucky's lawyers finally sent me the financial records on Gilcrest Manor. A $140,000 loan, which represents the controlling interest, was made to the nursing home by the Renee's Realty Corporation last year. Nick Zabo. That's it. So whether he knows what's going on up there or not is beside the point. He's ultimately responsible. Son of a gun. Well, I don't know what I'm so surprised about. Man, this is quite a coup, old kid. I thought so myself. However, if I'm going to get it on the air, I've got to go home and settle down with my typewriter for the rest of the night. Yeah, well, I'll uh, get in touch with the special prosecutor and uh, he'll tune in. Well. Okay. Hey, I don't have to tell you how proud I am of you, do I? You know, that's really what I came to hear. <laughs> Goodbye, love. Love. Okay. You don't suppose Mary nailed Nick Zabo, do you? A paternity revealed. Bucky and Nicholas deserve to know the truth. If I tell them, it'll blow them apart. Either you tell them, or I will. And Johnny's recruiting you to work for the Zakars. Will his need to prove himself pushing to the mob? I have to make this choice on my own. Watch General Hospital weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. Together. At Cheese It, we expect a lot from our cheese. Why did the cook get arrested? I don't know. He was caught beating an egg. <laughs> a cheesemonger, a dairy farmer, and a duck walk into this. Wait a minute. Have you heard this one? Nice tie, sir. Is that a Windsor knot? We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheese It, real cheese matters. Coming up on an all new Being Erica, she's seen her future. Nine years from now, something awful is going to happen. Am I dead? Discovered secrets from the past. They assaulted you. You don't know what you're talking about. But will everything Erica's been through. I just want to make you happy. I'm sorry. Prepare her for what comes next. Why is this happening? The last episode before the life-shattering season finale. All will be revealed. Being Erica. All new this Wednesday at 11, only on Soapnet. Uh, so, uh, how'd it go with Bucky? You have a nice time at the park? Mm-hmm. Oh, say, did you wangle uh, an invitation to meet Mrs. Carter? You bet I did. Hey, hey. Uh, Rini, uh, would you mind telling me what uh, what's with the books? Well... Tomorrow, I'm going to meet Mrs. Henry Osborne Carter, Jr., and I want to do a little research so I can talk about what she likes to talk about. Her hobbies are orchids and dogs, lasso, apso dogs. Remember what the magazine article said? Yeah, 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 I guess so. Well, what do you want to talk to me about? Now, Rini, how can we talk while you're reading? Sure we can. Well, I was wondering about your job at Channel R. Just, uh, just what do you do up there? Oh, they got me running around like a slave. Oh, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. Are you involved in that community news program? I specialize in dropping cue cards. <laughs> and on, uh, what else? What other programs do they do besides news? I don't know. Different kinds of specials, according to Sam. I didn't start watching Channel R until I was in, in a hospital, Daddy. Uh, specials, huh? You mean, uh, like about neighborhood problems? Things like that? Mm-hmm. Why are you so interested in Channel R? Oh, oh, I was just bragging about you to some of my friends, uh, you know, the way I do, and one of them said that, uh, that Channel R is into investigative reporting. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but I know it has something to do with detective work, and I don't want you mixed up with that. Daddy, I do go for work. Ah. I mean, I pick up after Sam and Mary, I get coffee, I answer the phone now and then. But I'm not in any danger, believe me. Oh, well, I'm uh, glad to hear that. So, uh, what's, uh, what's Mary Ryan working on now? Oh, 
nothing exciting. Oh, she thinks it is, but it's really a bore. It's a story about... <clears throat> about? Well, Sam said I'm not uh, supposed to talk about anything that might be confidential with outsiders. And I told him I knew how to keep my mouth shut. So now your old man's an outsider, huh? Yeah, according to Sam's definition. Hey, listen. I'll tell you this much. What Mary's working on is so tame it would put you to sleep. I mean, it's in the category of good works and noble deeds, you know. Yeah, nothing flashy, huh? I mean, uh, she's not trying to put the finger on anybody, huh? Who are you worried about? You're not in any kind of trouble, are you, Daddy? Oh, me? No, no, of course not. Daddy, I hope you mean that. Because this would be just about the worst possible time for any public scandal about you. I mean, when I meet Mrs. Carter, I don't want to be ashamed of anything, especially my last name. Hey, now, you got every reason in the world to be proud. You just walk up to that uh, rich Boston lady, look her right in the eye, you smile, a little wonderful smile of yours. Boy, she'll have you out buying, for, buying a wedding dress before you know it. I think she'll wait till Bucky proposes. <laughs> oh, this is impossible. I can't memorize all the Latin names for all these different kinds of orchids. I'll just memorize two, and then I'll go heavy on the dogs. Well, I hope she doesn't travel with them. They smell awful. Uh, Rini. Yeah? Rini, if you ever had to make the choice between telling me something and keeping your mouth shut for Sam... Daddy, I'd always tell you everything important. You know that. Next, take a trip to the Upper West Side on Ryan's Hope. Later, spend some time in Genoa City with the Young and the Restless, only on SoapNet. People are talking about General Hospital's Sean Butler. Patricia Rich posted on Facebook, he is a good-looking bad boy with a good side. I'm really digging this one. Elizabeth Cross agrees. Oh, yes, he is a sexy man. Sookie Williams Ellis adds, I trust my eyes when I look at him, and they like what they see. Judy McCoy says, good choice, GH. And Kathleen Hahn sums it up. So damn hot. People are talking about General Hospital. Weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 10 on SoapNet. Be proud to admit your age. I'm 43. Only Rock Retinol Correction Deep Wrinkled Night Cream is clinically proven to give 10 years back to the look of skin, diminishing the look of even deep wrinkles. 10 years? I'll take that. Rock. We keep our promises. Your whites start out with a bright future. Then, over time, become dull and lose their luster. Because washing in the Bargain brand can leave dirt from the wash on your clothes, causing your whites to get dingy. New Improved Tide Plus Bleach helps to remove the dirt in one wash to bring your whites back to bright. Turning whitish to wow. Tide Plus Bleach. Style is an option. Clean is not. Also try Tide Stain Release, the in-wash booster from Tide. She felt lost until the combination of three good probiotics in Philips Colon Health defended against the bad gas, diarrhea, and constipation. And it helped balance her colon. Ooh, now that's the best part. I love your work. Philips Colon Health. Mom knew a Demera secret and look what happened to her. Their secret died with Faye. Nobody has any idea what we've done. But when Nicole gets too close... What could Mom do about Will she be next on their hit list? Who the hell is out there? Watch Days of Our Lives weeknights at 6 and 11 on SoapNet. A marriage made in heaven is hell for everyone else. Dad's new marriage could send her back to the bottom. Stay away from my son. Say I do to the young and the restless tonight at 7 on SoapNet. The minute he walked in, I knew he was trouble. Yeah, the best kind of trouble. Easy there, fella. The Jackal had a story to tell. And I had a typewriter. The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli, as told to Diane Miller. It's Port Charles' worst nightmare come true. Shocking secrets. Unbelievable scandals. Run on sentences. And the rest, as they say, is history. The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli. Now available at ABC.com and wherever books are sold. No one understands motherhood better than the women of The View. Being a mother requires a sense of humor. <laughs> 
It has certainly prepared me in the art of negotiation. Have you ever debated a two-year-old? I sometimes feel like the mother hen on the show. It's not like having a pet. I have to make sure that they don't kill each other. That's what parenthood is, and motherhood especially. I have used timeouts on the show. It's a mom's view. It's the mother of all shows. The View, weekdays only on ABC. explaining all those legal terms in the financial, financial reports. That's all right. You figured most of it out yourself. Are you annoyed about something? Like me staying up and working all night on Gilcrest Manor? Oh, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to watch somebody else push to me to deadline. Oh, I can't wait for people to hear about Hugh Sharp and all this business. Jack, I'm so excited. Now I know how you must feel about your column. You got a good story. I'm glad for you. <laughs> I don't know about this apartment, no? Hmm? I don't know what we're gonna do with this apartment after we're married. Room for another typewriter. Yeah, we're both in the same kind of business. We need, need quiet to work, some place to sleep when we're exhausted, and one room's not enough. I'm keeping you awake. No, no I sleep through an air raid. I, I could always take an apartment down the hall. Might not be a bad idea. Oh, honey, what's the matter? Nothing. Was your mom tonight with all the lists and plans for the wedding? Something at the paper? No, no, no. Everything's fine. This feels a lot like the beginning of a fight that would probably clear the air. But, honey, I don't have time for it now. I want to know what's wrong, but I just can't stop to figure it out tonight. I'm sorry. I need a drink. Well, I need a kiss. Now. Jack. Come on. I can't talk to anybody. Hello. So you are home. I was wondering whether you really did have a column to do. Well, sh sure, sure I did. That's good. Um, thanks for tonight. I really enjoyed it, and I, I hope I'll see you again. Oh, you, you will. Soon. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I got work to do. Well, I don't want to keep you. Right. Who was that? Beautiful lady reporter who has a crush on me. She has good taste. You don't believe me? <laughs> I certainly do. Why do you want me to be jealous? Oh, darling Jack, I trust you not to get involved with beautiful lady reporters or anybody else. You got more than enough on your hands with me. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Yeah. I'm downright cocky. I don't much like being taken for granted. Oh, Pumpkin, you are on the edge of an awful mood, but please let's deal with it after the story's done. I love you. I adore you. But right now I gotta work. 